the impact on video games, the impact on, um, on storytelling, the impact on all kinds of genres of, uh, of entertainment is just going to be pretty stunning. We've got another breakthrough part, which is a, uh, a graphics processor uh, that uh, is being provided to us using an NVIDIA design. We've been working with NVIDIA, uh, coming up with some special requirements for this uh, game console. And we're really pleased to have them uh, as the partner doing the, the graphics chip here. And that's way beyond uh, any product that exists today. In fact, this is uh, three generations beyond the best uh, graphics chips that are, are shipping inside the PC right now. Uh, it, is a, a, it is leveraged off of the great work that's being done in the PC arena, but it is a, a whole new level of, of capability. So let's dive into that. Uh, why, why is this earth-shattering performance? Well, it's a, a 300 megahertz clock, and we can do 467 floating point operations. So that's 140 gigaflops. Uh, the polygon throughput is really quite something. We have this notion of micropolygons, over 300 million triangles per second. If you're texturing and lighting, 150 million triangles a second. We've got a fill rate uh, that's pretty unbelievable. If you just think of the resolution and, and how many times you want to update the screen every second, you have no limitation here uh, in terms of creating movie-like experiences. The memory approach we've used here uh, is a, a very important part of the design. We've got 64 megs of memory, and it's a unified memory approach. And it uses this DDR capability, so we have 200 megahertz of bandwidth uh, to the memory, from the memory to the GPU. So what, what's appropriate for the graphics engine, uh, the hardware shader models, the vertex operations, all of those things are done on the graphics processor. Uh, we're also moving to new levels in terms of the graphics, uh, real-time photorealism, on the verge of coming out with DirectX 8. Uh, DirectX 8 will have uh, some things that are really quite amazing. Uh, and this is where we bring in programmable shaders uh, that uh, let you get at uh, some of those new hardware accelerations. Vertex lighting is actually per pixel. You can see that explosion right there too as well. Right, so like all this, all this stuff that goes on is a lot of it has to do with dynamic light and dynamic uh, shading of the environment, which means that uh, we can we can pre-render light maps, uh, so it'll show you what lights would do in real life, uh, and then in real time we can actually like you know explosions will light up the walls, sparks will light up the walls. You can get like flickering so. effects. You can turn on a flashlight, um, which is something that is pretty expensive in video games, so you don't see it too much. But uh, on Halo, we've been able to right, do that all right. over the place. Right, cube mapping, detail maps, everything. The sun. One of our programmers made it so that the sun actually creates like a volumetric effect when it passes through objects, so that uh, it's more more or less simulate. So everything we're too expensive to use on other systems. I mean, we can do them everywhere now.